Jesus Christ, who has busted open the veil that separated man from God. Only one man every year could go in to the Holy of Holies. And why? Why would you want to go into the Holy of Holies? Why would you want to get close to God? Because there is where propitiation is made. There is where reconciliation happens. We don't get our sins covered and appeased, or we don't get expiated, washed away thoroughly, dealt with 100%, where the sacrifice and the blood, which had to be scattered all over, sprinkled on the articles and the altar and on the people, that has to happen in order for us to have access. Because it says in Hebrews chapter 10 that Jesus has given us the power to be bold as we make an approach. As we make our approach to the Holy of Holies, it says in verse 19 of verse 10, uh, chapter 10, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ. See, if you're a Jew, you care about getting closer. If you're a Gentile, you don't even understand why. But you have to know that getting close to Yahweh, getting close to Jesus is an amazing thing. That for the priest, the high priest, that veil represented the flesh of Jesus Christ. That every time he parted that veil, he went into a place that was very scary. It was pure, no sin. And if that priest was not properly washed and had not confessed his personal sins to God, he would die in that place. It was too holy just for one man to enter. But the Lord himself was covering himself with his flesh, which was to represent his body. His body was what the priest went through every time he entered once in a year. And his body had to be killed, and it was perfect. The veil did its job. That's why the veil was rent in two when he cried out and breathed his last. From the top to the bottom, because he had died, his flesh had been destroyed. So then now the veil is destroyed. And that covenant requirement of the law of Moses had been dealt with. And now it is abolished. It is put away. And we have the boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus Christ. I cannot explain it any different than that. That you get access to the very presence of God. That you enter into heaven itself by faith today. He says... You have a new and a living way. It is an abiding way. It is not stale in any way. You never get tired of coming into the Holy of Holies. You are a living sacrifice going in yourself, denying yourself, and taking on this new life, this new way, this new heart. Your heart has been opened up to God and God has broken your veil of the flesh and now he is communing with you and you become a priest unto God and now you offer up out of your life your offerings and your sacrifices, your praise that's on your lips, your words confess God and support his vision, his work in the world, his plans and even his word. So you become a priest standing, uh, facing God and dealing with God and having the people behind you. You become a prayer warrior. You become a minister. You, you minister unto God, and you have dealings with God in this new and living way, which Jesus inaugurated by his flesh, through the veil that is his flesh. And verse 21 says, And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, there's only one priest that's over the house of God, and that is Jesus Christ, the anointed of God. He says, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. What are you waiting for? Right now, there's this new and living way that has been presented to you. There's a door for you to go through and it will only be opened and you will only be able to pass through it by faith. You need to exercise faith. Faith. Everything you get is based on faith from the beginning to the end. Everything that you will be judged on, all your words will be dealt with by God based on how you spoke and how you thought and how you functioned here in this life. So the judgment must begin in the house of God. It must begin with those of us who have been the caretakers of this word. And we must rightly divide it and we must broadcast it out so that you 
might become built up and become those living stones that Peter talks about. You are the house of God. He says, let us draw near with a sincere heart in the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Your conscience, if it's condemning you now, if you have guilt over any sin right now that you're committing, let's get it rid of the sin. Let's cleanse it. Let's get wash it away. If it's eating away at you, if it's indulgence of the flesh in drinking, in too much eating, in overworking, in pornography, in lusting after another woman, and in subordination, whatever it is, laziness, let it be dealt with right now. Let your conscience be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ and let your body be sanctified and washed and purified and turned over to the service of our great King. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. If you pour all of your faith out, if you just go beyond your wildest dreams in your faith walk, God is faithful to meet you there. He will carry it through. His word to you will not fall short. And this is written by someone that was in difficult times. In 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, Paul's talking about being a servant of Christ. Now, if you believe that Paul wrote Hebrews, uh, you and I could have a good conversation about that. But either way, he was a Jew writing to Jews. And they're on the verge of losing this temple, this physically amazing structure. So impressive, so well built, so pretty was this temple. And if you were a Pharisee or a priest, a Sadducee, a lawyer, you would go in there and you would do amazing worship. It would all pertain to the temple. But what happened was, is the temple was leveled, and then we had to come in in a different way. The temple was about to be destroyed. So in Hebrews chapter 10, the writer is preparing the people for a new and living way. That the temple of God is with men. He dwells with the assembling of the people. He says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as is the manner of some. Because when you assemble two or three, three of you to gather, Jesus promises to be there in the midst. And when you are in the tough times and there's no uh, real communion with the brethren because you happen to be in jail right now or you happen to be in a place where your church is just not getting it done and you don't feel the presence of God there and you're searching, you and your wife or you and your children or you and a friend can gather together and know that Jesus Christ is with you. He has made for you a new and living way. That building is not church for you. Jesus Christ is your church. And gathering and partaking with Him is your fellowship with Him. And He meets with us in a very special way. He says, We, being servants of Christ, ambassadors of His message, proclaimers of His truth, we are stewards of the mysteries of God. We have this very impossible job of trying to explain heavenly things in an earthly world. And in verse 2 of chapter 4 of 1 Corinthians, he says, In this case, moreover, it is required of us as stewards to be found trustworthy. Jesus was trustworthy. He did everything the Father told him to do. He performed a perfect righteousness. He was the perfect priest. He was the perfect sacrifice. And he was trustworthy. Now, we as his servants must also be trustworthy. We must be reliable. You cannot phone this in. You cannot fake the Christian life. You cannot put on a show. God sees it all. And if you are not working and seeking after being the man of God you've been called to be, you've had people pray for you, you have an anointing on your life, you submitted to God to preach the gospel, maybe you're preaching it right now. Maybe you're supposed to preach it, but you're not. I'm asking you right now to stop playing the game. Get rid of your bad conscience and start new. Cleanse those sins by the blood of the Lamb. Apply Jesus' blood through a thorough repentance. Go through all the details of your sin. I go through this a lot. I confess these sins. I said, Lord, if I have aught with any man, if I, if even my enemies, I'm not supposed to have aught with them. I'm supposed to pray for them the way the Lord wants me to pray for them. 